Are you someone who is having trouble finding confidence in your life and yourself? If so, it is totally normal and totally part of the way it is. And you are not alone. Okay. This is part of the deal. And we're going to talk about why. Why does this happen? So when you're in a, in a relationship with a narcissistic person, narcissists will do things. I'm going to hold my notes real close. Hold my notes close and make this happen. All right. They do things like they build you up and then they pull the rug out from under you, right? They build you up and they knock you down. They tear you down, really. They do things like project issues onto you that are not yours, that make you question your decisions, your feelings, your thoughts. They gaslight you and make you disbelieve what you're actually feeling or be confused about what you're feeling and think you're supposed to be feeling something else. They make you feel wrong. They make you feel shame. They make you, they basically take your self-worth and destroy it, right? And it's so weird to think that someone could do that to another person, but it happens. And this is how it is when you're with a narcissistic person. They compare you to other people, which puts you in the position of feeling like you need to be perfect or you're not, you're not matching, meeting up to the standards of somebody else. They passively, aggressively throw others in your face by whether it be other um, men or women, depending what their preference is, or whether it be friends or whatever it is, they're constantly in, it's always a competition and always a comparison when you're around a narcissistic person. So your confidence starts to fail because when you feel good about yourself, right, they knock you down. And when you're not feeling so good about yourself, they like to throw things in your face that make you feel worse. All right. They are right. Tell you things like you're bad, you're wrong, you're stupid, you're not enough, so on, you know. They'll fill your head with all kinds of thoughts and those thoughts that they fill your head with become your beliefs over time. They program you to believe this about yourself and to not have confidence. So we know why that happens, right? Most of us have experienced some form of this uh, within the toxic relationship where your confidence is knocked down so far that people can't even like order their own meals or or... They can't make friends or have conversations or they feel like um, everyone's judging them or they feel like they can't get a job. It may affect your getting a job or, or doing an interview or it may affect um, your new relationships that you have. You may feel like you're better, like you're healed. And then you try to enter something really scary like dating and you, your confidence is to enter the dating world and watch your confidence sink because it's a weird place, right? So... Yeah, it, it's not something that it, it's, it's everywhere. It's self-confidence and, and all of that is, it affects everything. So what are some ideas and some tips on how to restore, regain, or even improve self-confidence from where it was before the narcissist? Improve would be better. We could all use a little, right? So let's talk about it. Number one, realize that we talked about this the other day about perfectionism and, and, and how nobody's perfect and all of that. Being okay with the mistakes that you make. How? How can people be okay with the mistakes they make? Well, one thing is to realize that every mistake that's made is actually a lesson that can be learned that you can grow and evolve from. If you didn't have mistakes, there wouldn't be innovation and there wouldn't be creative expression and there wouldn't be, um, there wouldn't be any puzzling or wonder or curiosity in life because everything would be known. So if you adapt a, a, an a, if you adapt your thinking or, or change your thinking to being more toward that the mistakes that you make help you grow, that you can learn from them instead of feeling the shame and, and self-criticism, that is one thing that can help. All right, another thing is making lists of what you do well. So if you're trying to gain confidence, think about the things you already do well. I don't even care if it's a teeny tiny thing like you can brush your teeth well. It doesn't matter. Make a list of the things in your life you do on a regular basis, regularly, uh, responsibly, well, um, to, a, to a high standard, not perfect, but to a standard that makes you feel satisfied and pleased. Uh, things that make you feel confident, anything, teeny tiny things, make a list of them so that you can see the things about yourself. Basically, when we're in this state, we're not seeing ourselves. What we're seeing is the story we've been told about ourselves from the abuse. 
we're not seeing the true self. So make a list so you can start to see parts of yourself. Okay. Um, when trusted, not toxic, but trusted friends, families, even uh, could be a teacher, a, a, a boss, um, a coach, a therapist, whatever. When, when somebody in your life who you are trusting to on a certain level says something nice to you, a compliment or a comment about something you've done that was great, whatever, or something that they see in you, when they point out your qualities, use it as a mirror to see yourself. Listen. Resist the urge to fight the the compliment. It's really hard for us to take compliments. Take a breath and say, that is how they're seeing me to yourself. Say something to yourself that affirms what they're saying. You don't have to see it. You just have to realize other people are seeing it. There's something in me. There's a quality in me that that person has seen, and they are reflecting it back to me with this compliment. And I can either look at the light, or I can continue to look into the dark and the shadows and try and find ways to disprove that compliment. My choice, right? So especially when it's someone you know and trust. Now, I realize that compliments have gotten us into trouble and so that there's there's always the feeling that they're, that they're lies or they're untruths or they're manipulations. But I'm talking about when it's just a simple little thing coming from someone. They're still hard to hear, right? Listen. Okay. Another tip for gaining confidence. Visualize yourself as you would like to be. We spend so much time in our imaginations, right? We spend so much time in our thinking and in our in our thoughts and in our beliefs and in our spinning our wheels about the negative. Use some of that time in your day instead to spin your to spin your thoughts toward what you what you want to see yourself as, how you wish to be, the way the confidence you wish to embody. Visualize yourself having it already. Picture yourself in situations and what it would be and feel like to have that confidence. Sit down a minute and do it on purpose. A few minutes, five minutes, whatever. Visualize yourself as you wish to be. Okay? Manifest it that way. Okay? Affirmations is another tip. Affirmations are pretty helpful. It can be anything. It can be I am confident. Or it can be something as simple as, I can do this, I got this, I got my own back, whatever it is. Affirm, affirm. Do something different or something that scares you. Uh, okay, being careful with this one, depending on how triggered one is and how close you are to anxiety in your life. You, you know, do test your limits, see where you're at with this. But doing something different can put you in a different... If you go on a trip somewhere and you're, say you're by yourself somewhere new, it can be both scary and exhilarating. It can be, you're in a different state. Um, you can be in a different space inside your head, right? So when you do something that scares you, something that is pushing you just a little bit, because it, when you put yourself up against something that is a little bit fearful, something like, knowing that there's going to be a bunch of people here and all the barking is going to happen and it's a little intimidating to sit here and try and talk and keep my train of thought. Can I actually do this? Can I manage it? And when I'm done, I'm just going to laugh at the mistakes because whatever, I make them every day. I'm used to it. That part doesn't scare me. But doing this under a little bit of pressure and with time constraints is a little bit, it's pushing me up against my comfort zone. That's what I'm talking about. When I'm pushed up against my comfort zone and I get through it to the end, I gain confidence from the experience. Even if there's some failures that happen like that, when you are ready and you do something that is pushing you up against your comfort zone, remember that more important than anything is limiting and stopping the negative self-talk and making sure that you are being fair and kind and humorous and curious with yourself rather than criticizing and judgmental. Well, that comes to the next one, and that is restate the inner critic. So you can have an experience that's kind of, you know, well, okay, it's a little stressful, and I'm going to totally fail at this, and then my confidence can go really down because then I can go, well, why did you even do that? You should have done this. You should have done that. What's the point of that? How do I learn from that? How do we turn situations that are that could be confident 
draining into something that is confidence boosting. And I think one major way is by restating the inner critic. Listening to that inner critic, laughter and chaos is the best <laughs> because it's all you can do sometimes is stare and laugh, right? All right. Um, but restating the inner critic can help you even more. Well, maybe not more than the laughter. Laughter is pretty good. But it trains your brain to handle the situation differently. And the whole point of a lot of this reprogramming after toxic abuse is that we have to look at Ruby. I know I'm holding your collar and you don't like it, but then you don't bark. You just stay with me. She's happy. Okay. Um, training ourselves and reprogramming all of the horrible things that they put in our heads to believe about ourselves. If you're doing it in action, allow the rejection or failures for a set amount of time. Do a challenge. I'm going to allow for the next month every everything that knocks my confidence to happen, and I'm going to see what I can learn from it so that I can I can grow and change and build myself up. But so maybe a little more of an advanced. Get you've got a handle on some of this, and you want to start pushing into how to really build confidence. Um, the rules are no judging yourself. Okay. No negative self-talk. So once you've got the restating of the inner critic thing going, you can, you can I, I do this all the time. I just sit and watch the things that are not, that I'm not succeeding at and try really hard not to judge them and to be more positive about myself and the situation and see where I can actually make changes. And when you make little changes and you see them shift things in life, sometimes they fail, sometimes they succeed. You learn that the confidence doesn't come from failing and succeeding. It comes from the trying and the doing and the living. All right. Okay. Um, set up things that you know you are good at so that you can succeed. Make, make sure that you set up things in your life that, that are there to help you see your strengths to build your confidence. If you had a little child and they, they were really clumsy and they had, you know, fine motor skill stuff, you wouldn't give them the hardest tasks with the teeniest, tiniest toys. You give them big chunky blocks and you give them play equipment they can fall off of safely so they can learn to get their balance. So you, give, you set them up to struggle and you set them up to succeed at the same time. You don't give them everything super easy because then you're just, if there's no challenge. I, I think we like the challenge but we like to be able to master things and to succeed at things in order to gain confidence. So set your set up your life in that way, like find little things that you can, I don't know, everyone's going to be different there, little things, whatever it is, to succeed at. Make sure some of them are super succeeding things so you feel good and others have a challenge to them. Puzzling. Big one. Big one's next. Make sure you are working on your boundaries in your life. If you are a person that does not have boundaries with other people, how are you going to have confidence? And when you can, when you feel like you're always yielding to everybody else, set up some boundaries. When you stick to boundaries, it can help you build confidence. It can make you feel uncomfortable and awkward and like you're actually uh, upsetting other people at first, but after a while it builds confidence. So boundaries are important. Okay. Shifting your perspective of what good and bad is. Basically, something bad can happen. That bad thing happening can set off a chain of events that actually creates a good effect. We don't know. When, when we judge something as good and bad, we don't know the outcome. We don't know the, we don't know the big picture. But realizing that good and bad is not, unless you're talking about morality toward being kind and uh, doing the right thing toward others and oneself, that good and bad, we judge ourselves. Good can come from bad, bad can come from good. Something really amazing can have horrible effect on, on things around you. Something really great, bad can actually have beauty and growth and change in it that creates something really good, that creates something really positive. So, but we judge good and bad. Like we have a failure or we have a, like say we are, um, say we make a new friend somewhere and they turn out to be toxic. And like within a week, we're going, that's bad. That's bad because I didn't see it. I should have seen it. We start judging ourselves. The situation itself isn't positive, so you get out of it. What we're not seeing is we had the confidence and the 
the thoughts and the ability to see the red flags enough to not to not go so far into that relationship that we're trauma bonded, right? That's that would be a positive. And, and so we don't know. We we judge things though so quickly, and we will judge toward the negative most likely because our self confidence is low, our self esteem is low after narcissistic abuse. So of course, we're going to self judge negatively. Learn to see that good and bad don't really matter half the time when we're when we are talking about our own experience of ourself in life, unless it's a moral issue or something where it's hurting someone else or yourself, right? Okay, so instead of that, try seeing things um, as a journey and that you're just on this path, moving along and, and you're, you're doing the best to be the best person you can, right? Okay, stop comparing yourself, stop comparing your situation, stop comparing yourself. It's hard to build confidence when you're comparing yourself to other people. It really, really is. That's how that's part part of how we got here in the first place is because we were compared to other people or we were being um, held up against held up alongside other people to say which is better because that's what a narcissist does, right? And so stop, stop comparing yourself. It doesn't it isn't useful and it isn't going to help you have a competitive edge or have the have the drive. To, to feel better when you're so far down from narcissistic abuse. Comparison is, yeah, it's just not useful in this situation. It's not going to help you build the confidence. Stop, stop comparing. Another tip for building confidence is to take care of your body. Take care of your health, your physical health as best you can. A lot of people have issues where it's very difficult to take care of their health, but there's always ways to help improve your own health, right? As best as you can. It can mean meditation. It can mean relaxation. I'm not talking about get fit and firm. I'm talking about eating healthy for you, whatever works for your body. Um, those things build confidence because what you're doing is caretaking the vessel that you live in, right? The body. You're caretaking the, you're doing something for the health and well-being, not only of your mental health and your emotional health, but for the physical health of yourself, which is, if you would pay attention to the good that you're doing in life, would be something you could notice, right? And could help you build confidence, not only because you feel better physically when you take care of your body, but because you are actively doing something to help your life. All right. Um, and you could say the same for your emotional health, your mental health, and your spiritual health. But your body is important. It's carrying you around. So, and, and a lot of us are pretty beat up in our bodies from, or a pretty, um, have, have issues from the abuse, right? So, okay. Um, having compassion for yourself as you would for others. This is a practice of patience and compassion and finding confidence if you are compassionate with yourself, there's another thing you can see that you did for yourself that you would do for anyone that helps you find the confidence. So basically the things you're doing, you're putting into, you know, the confidence jar and it starts to fill. Now it doesn't all come at once. Okay. Um, so when you have doubt, I like this one and I don't know how I'm going to talk about it. When you have doubt, we all have doubts. We have doubts about what we, you know, like say you're having difficulty making decisions because you lack confidence or you don't trust yourself in situations because you lack confidence and you have doubt. Try to see the doubt as a question rather than the answer. We see doubt right now as, well, I, I, don't, I don't know what to do or, or I can't trust myself or we see it as the, as the answer, as the end. But try to see the doubt as a question. Why do I have this doubt? What is going on around this feeling? Um, what can I learn from it? Is can, do I make a pros and cons? Let's like see it as a <clears throat> see it as an as a way to question yourself rather than a way to place judgment on yourself. And by question yourself, I don't mean question your decision. I mean make a decision. Let it be good, right or wrong. We don't know. Um, let the decision happen and question it along the way, which comes to my very last thing. And I'll, I'll tie these two together with curiosity. If you have some curiosity about your life and you have some curiosity about the journey that you're on, either decision 
unless something's like really obviously just not the right decision for your life. But most of the time when we find ourselves in the state of self-doubt with decision making or trusting yourself in a situation, it's not like life or death. And it's not, it's more like we don't know which way is the right path. We don't know which choice is the right choice. And it's either one could lead to the right choice. So sometimes you make the decision and you can sit there forever not making the decision because you're so wrapped up in it having to be the right one. So if you follow, go, go toward it with curiosity, well, I'm going to make this choice and we're going to see what happens. Knowing that at any moment, you're allowed to steer off onto a different path. You do not have to stay on that trajectory most of the time. Most of the time you can say, you know what, that's not working for me and switch to the other one. Or, you know, it just depends on the situation. Uh, but if you're curious about it rather than critical about it, it the, the attitude changes the entire experience. And it helps you build confidence because if you're curious, you're not judging. You're actually curious what's going to happen. I don't know. I might totally fail. And I laugh because that's, the, that's literally how I think. I don't know. I may bomb. Okay. That's all right. If I do, then I do. And then what did I learn? Then I learned maybe I don't want to talk about this topic and I'll do something else or whatever, you know. It's okay. Or maybe I should. Maybe I should do it again and try it try it better next time or try it differently next time so that it comes out where I'm saying what I wanted to say, right? Depends on what's happening. Okay. Um, okay. But what do we do with our people's expectations of us? Let them have them. Okay, that depends on what you're talking about. If it's a boss, then you learn the boundaries and the parameters of that job, and you learn what the expectations are. You do your best to meet them according to the job requirements. Obviously, you can't walk, you're not going to walk in to do a job you're not qualified for and expect to meet the expectations. If you know you are qualified for it and you're meeting the expectations and that person still isn't satisfied, perhaps it's the wrong fit for a job. Or perhaps there's some conflict uh, in communication between, you know, it depends on the situation. If, it, if you're talking about friends' expectations of you, why do we even have those? Why do we have, ex people should expect you to be exactly who you are. That's the only expectation I have of a friend. I expect them to be who they are. And if they're not, then I start questioning who, who are they really? And that's when I start seeing red flags in the other person. Um, but otherwise, the only expectation I have is people to, if I know someone is always late, I don't expect them to be on time. I expect them to be who they are. And if they're late, they're late, <laughs> right? You just tell that person to arrive 10 minutes earlier. Tell them we're, we're meeting at five when you're really meeting at 530, right? I'm just kidding. But well, actually, <laughs> you know, you, you can't, you can't live your life based on what other people want from you. That becomes a codependent existence rather than an independent or um, co-creative experience with other people. So any other questions or anything else? That's all I got you guys today. That's it. Because you guys are quiet. <laughs> it's quiet. Then. Um, and yeah, we'll be short. But that's what I have for finding confidence. Those were lots of tips. So hopefully some of them will help some of you guys. Uh, if you would need help with anything, check out the info in the main description of every video if you need coaching help or you would be interested in group coaching. Those info's in the main description of any video and I'm available. There we go. Um, that's it. I'll see you guys. Take care. Bye-bye. <laughs>